Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update, the weekly update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 8th of July 2019 and the time is just gone 12.30 British summer time. And to be perfectly honest, it's been a fairly quiet start to the European trading st- session. Um, we had a very, we, we had a fairly respectable set of non-farm payrolls figures from the United States last Friday. Uh, the headline figure was well above expectations. Unemployment margin ticked higher, and the uh, and the average earnings figures uh, r- remained steady. And the numbers and overall, it was a very good report. And what it did was, it ended up kind of casting, uh, uh, getting traders to question: Will the Federal Reserve cut interest rates in the month of July? And because the, re- the result, by and large, was better than expected, it, it, it kind of it led to a sell-off in global in, uh, in uh, U.S. and European equities. On Friday, we saw Asian equities fall overnight, and now this morning, not, not, not today in Europe, things are looking a bit quiet. It's a bit subdued. Some markets are up, some markets down, but the common theme across the board is low volatility. And in my opinion, it's almost like yeah, traders in Europe are waiting for. Uh, the U.S. markets to open to open in, in a couple of hours' time, and actually could take their cues from the U.S. Because bearing in mind, Friday we did have the non-farm payrolls report, but also a lot of traders and investors and, de- and, and dealers in uh, in the U.S. in the U.S. markets also took last Friday off because last Friday was was the fifth of July, the day after the fourth of July U.S. Independence celebrations. Uh, so the moves you saw on, on Friday may not have been a full reflection of what the U.S. market felt. So I suspect we're, we're, traders in Europe are kind of playing the wait and see game to see how American, how the uh, the American markets get back to full swing, how they digest the numbers. You know, keep in mind, last month we heard from James Bullard, Bullard of the Federal Reserve, who said that he was quite dovish, by the way, and who said that a rate cut of or, or, you know, rate cuts of you know, zero. Uh, 50 basis point, 50, 50 basis points, 2019 would be overdone. Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, was trying to trying to uh, restate that the Fed's in the uh, independence in, in the face of President Trump calling for lower calling for lower rates and calling for a, a lower U.S. dollar. So the the numbers you saw from the U.S. on Friday could be uh, used as a kind of a justification by the by, by the Fed, by the Federal Reserve later this month. To actually just sit tight, even though Jerome Powell said the argument to lower rates has become strengthened, but that was before the most recent numbers. But also that could easily be just saying that there's not, just because the argument is strengthened, there's no guarantee rates are going to be cut. Uh, so what I quickly do now is take a look at the week ahead, look at look at the main events of the week, and then in, in that context run tr- through some of the big markets. If you go to our website cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis. A large portion of the analysis, myself and the other analysts, uh, right, gets published to the section. Uh, so let this quickly scroll down. Um, it was already kind of kind of in the offing, but it was confirmed today. Deutsche Bank uh, uh, released a large number of, uh, of job cuts. Some of the reason, some of the region of eighteen thousand jobs are going to be are going to be uh, cut at Deutsche Bank as a part of the aggressive restructuring program. Tomorrow and Tuesday, we have first half figures from Microfocus. Say, sorry, I apologize. Um, yes, microfocus, yes, but also from from, uh, from Mercado. So, in chronological order, Mercado first half figures, as do microfocus. Um, we have second quarter figures from Levi Strauss on Tuesday tomorrow. Looking ahead to Wednesday, we have full year figures from Superdry. Um, across Wednesday and Thursday, uh, we have UK GDP and manufacturing, and we also have the Bank of England stability report. On Wednesday, we have the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. Uh, Q1 figures from Bed Bath & Beyond are out on Wednesday. On Thursday, second quarter figures from Delta Airlines. And on Friday, we have the U.S. Uh, sorry, we have apologies. We have the China trade balance. Uh, that's going to be important for a number of reasons. Keep an eye out for, for mining companies and oil and gas companies uh, on the back of that. We'll see how, how hungry China are for minerals. But also, in relation to uh, if, if, there is, if there is any impact on the tariff spat on the, the, the trade spat between the US and China is that being played out in the trade figures. Uh, take a look now at the FTSE 100. So this is a wider view of 2019. It's been a solid uh, over say six months for the FTSE 100. In fact last week we got the levels not seen since, uh, since August last, apologies, 
at levels not seen since August last year. So I give you an indication of how positive the run on the FTSE 200 has been. And if, if the, um, the, the wider bullish trend has been in place for many months now, it presses on higher from here. We could be looking at retesting this area here. Uh, levels not, um, last seen in early August last year up at 7,794. Um, we, we have been in a, in a bit of a downtrend in the, la in the last few sessions and there has been a decline in positive momentum. So the markets may drift a bit lower. And if that is to be the case, we could find some support in around this area here in around 7,400, big psychological number. And then possibly also from this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. Which comes into play at 7,356. You can see that at, that act as support us on a few occasions. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be so in the future. Obviously, there are no guarantees. And of the, the 50 day moving average across my in, important indices, uh, we'll, we'll also be looking at the, uh, the DAX and the SP 500. So we can see that all those markets are comfortably above their uh, respective 50 day moving averages. So the DAX had a, had a similar move to the FTSE in the regard that last only last week uh, hit a level not seen since er, since August last year. Give you an indication of how bullish the market is. It's been in a solid upward trend throughout 2019. If you press on higher from here, the DAX we could be looking at into towards the area here at 12,887. Any moves to the downside in the DAX might find some support in around this area here in around 12,400. On a few occasions, that region did act as resistance on the way up, so there's a possibility that, that area might act as support should we drift lower. And even if you drop below that, support could be found in this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 12,187. Notice how the, 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 um, the DAX is comfortably above its 50 moving average, just like how the, just like how the FTSE 100 is. Uh, even if you drop below that, uh, this this region here, the big, the big psychological number of 12,000, that also might add an act as an area of support for the DAX. Take a look now at the um, the the S and P 500 over in the US. So last uh, last week, the S and P 500, the S and P it uh, printed a record uh, in, uh, record highs. So it really, kind of sums up how, how bullish the uh, the wider market is. And obviously, keep in mind how much ground we've travelled since late December last since late December last year. So it's been in a solid upper, upper trend. Recently, we've hit an all-time high. So the sentiment is, and the trend is clearly to the upside. So if we take out 3,000, we could be looking at a pressing on up towards 3,000, uh, 3,000, you know, and 10, 20, and uh, so on and so forth. So that the more, uh, the more uh, all-time highs that are that are hit, the more likely we are we're going to continue to hit all-time highs. Um, if you do manage to see any any further of a pullback in the uh, in the S&P 500, support can be found from this region here in around 2,952, or possibly from this area here in at 2,910. And even if you go below that, this blue line here might act as act as support, which is the eternity move. So which is the 50 day moving average, and that comes to play at 2,886. And notice how the S&P 500, the DAX, and the FTSE 100 are all above their respective 50 day moving averages. And uh, Dow theory um, states that the averages must confirm each other. As you can see here, while all those those three major indices are all above their respective 50 day moving averages. It makes it more likely that they will continue to press on higher. Obviously, should they all fall below it or, or, or somewhere above, somewhere below, that, that the, the, the signal would, would be less clear. But it makes it more likely that they all will continue to press on higher while they all remain above their respective 50-day moving averages. Uh, speaking of markets that are, that are uh, doing quite well, take a look now at what's going on over in gold. So gold uh, in late... In late um, in late June, which was which wasn't that long ago, printed a six-year high, and in the last week or two, it's been largely kind of range bound. So kind of in around kind of the 14.40 at the top end, in around 13.80 at the lower end, and ultimately, while we can hold above this this area here in around 13.80, 13.82, it's likely that we could see the you know the the, uh, the wider bullish trend continue. Granted, it might, get, it might, might, it might press higher at a slower pace because obviously it's quite an impressive run they had here between late May and uh, and, and late June. 
and markets often find it difficult to to sustain the level at which it's actually um, pushing higher. So we could see a more uh, gradual move to the upside in the um, in the gold market. That's provided we hold above kind of 1380, and we could be looking heading back up towards um, this area here in around 1439, kind of the recent the recent high. And if you go beyond that, uh, please keep an eye out for. This area here to the upside in around kind of 1485. Um, should we should the uh, the wider upper trend continue? And even if we do drop below 1380, um, 82, which support could be found from this area here in around 1360, or perhaps down in uh, 1346. Take a look now at what's going on on the US dollar. So the wider view throughout 2019 is that the dollar, the euro dollar has been in a fairly solid downward trend between early January and basically late March, late May. It's been a classic example of a downward trend. It had a bit of a, a bit of a, a, a bounce back and a resurgence where we saw a couple of higher highs and higher lows. But fortunately, the euro dollar has turned lower again, it's dropped back below. It's uh, this red line here, the two of the moving average. It's firmly below that. And given that there's been a bit of a turnaround with the green back because the, the U.S. economy, the jobs market appears to be in better condition than traders thought, we may see a continuation of the dollar strength that is likely to put, on, put additional pressure on the single currency. So the the, uh, the 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 turnaround we've seen recently could continue. So we could be looking at taking out the kind of 112 area. I should we go below 112. We could be looking at heading back, retesting the lows of 2019 in around the kind of one spot 11.10. It's only really if you're going to take if you take off the recent high here, just north of 114 in a kind of 114.12, uh, then we should begin to become more confident that the kind of upward move in the last few weeks is going to continue. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the mid the mid March high of in at one spot 14.48. And taking a look now, at what's going on on the pound versus the US the US dollar? So sterling dollar has been in a fairly aggressive downward trend the last number of months. Nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Um, we, we can see here that at the lows we've hit uh, on, on Friday haven't really been seen since early January. That's when the uh, we get the, the flash crash in the uh, in the currency markets. And so if you press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here in around one spot at 24.76. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back down towards. This year here in at one spot 23.65. Any moves to the upside in sterling US dollar are likely to run under the resistance in around the 126 area. We can see on a few occasions there wasn't consolidation in that area. And if you press on higher from there, this blue line here, the 50 moving average, might act as resistance in at one spot 27.45. But it's really the kind of you know this area here, 128. Um, would we be looking to kind of take out? If you take out 128, then it's looking likely we could actually kind of shake off the recent negative trend that we've been in. Uh, that's based. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, me wrapped up for this week. If you have any comments to make on this video or any of the other videos we've made here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.